Good morning, Jen. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Well, I told you a little bit in email that, you know, we get information about women that we should know from all over. And this week was no different for us. And in fact, we got a message to our Facebook page from your sister-in-law, Lorraine. Yeah. And I want to read you what Lorraine had to say. Oh. She said, here's a courageous woman you should know. My sister-in-law, Jennifer. She's the first volunteer to receive the experimental COVID-19 vaccine as part of a clinical trial. That's bravery. I don't know if there is an act more courageous or selfless, particularly at this time. And I am grateful that you are making the time to speak to us today um, to share your story. Um, we would not normally or I would not normally record a phone conversation, but I agree wholeheartedly with Lorraine. Everyone needs to know who you are and what you're doing. And we want the story to come from you so that it's accurate and authentic. So thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be able to talk about it. So let's kind of set the stage a little bit because a couple of weeks ago, you, like everyone else, is living their life. You're a 43-year-old woman. As I understand it, you work in the tech sector? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you've got two teenage kids at home, a daughter yeah. and a son. Yeah. Life's rolling along. And then suddenly we all learn about the coronavirus. So from that point, when life took a sharp left turn for people all over the world, how did you go from there to learning about this trial? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's like, it's like some really um, uh, multiple left turns happening. You know, like two weeks ago, I, uh, even... Um, Two and a half weeks ago, I, 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 like many, I posted on Facebook and I'm like, hey guys, I don't get it. I mean, it's like the flu. Why are we all so, so freaked out? And, uh, and I had friends explaining it to me and it was a matter of days where I'm like, I went back and updated that post and I'm like, update, I get it. <laughs> um, and I still don't get it. You know, every day I get it more and more. Um, but uh, so um, when I, uh, uh, saw the call for volunteers. That was that was about two and a half weeks ago. Um, yeah, I just I jumped on it. A friend posted about it on Facebook, and I'm like, all right, there's something that I could do. Um, my son, since he was an infant, he's been involved in a couple um, studies at the University of Washington, um, so I'm familiar with that that process. And um, and yeah, I, I just jumped at the opportunity to um, to fill out the survey and and see see if I would be a good candidate. Uh, and I, I was, it was a different world two and a half weeks ago when I, when I, when I did that. And I'm so thankful that I did. And I'm very happy to be part of it right now. But, but it wasn't as much of a, I wasn't in as much of a crisis mode then. Um, uh, I, I was, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for, for ways that I can help and opportunities to, to help others. So that was a natural uh, thing for me to want to do that. Um, you know, right now, um, if you asked me, do I, do I want to participate in a, in a, a, a trial vaccine uh, today? If you asked me, I think, I, I don't think I would sign up. Like I'm too, um, I'm inward. I, I'm, I want to protect myself. I want to protect my family. And, and, um, I don't know that I would have that I have the ca would have the capacity to make that decision uh, that I made two and a half weeks ago. Again, I am beyond happy that I did it. Um, it just, you know, it's 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 different right now. I know it's yeah. different every single day. It's different every single hour. It's different. Yeah. Um, I want to understand also once you applied. What was the time frame in terms of you getting that phone call or that email back saying, okay, Jen, you've been accepted. We want you to be a part of the, the experimental trial with this, with this vaccine. Yeah, it was pretty quick. I, I, uh, filled out the survey, I think like on Tuesday and it was on a Thursday that I got a call, um, and did it, you know, 15 minute, like a phone screen on, on my health history. Um, everything looked good there. They wanted to confirm that I was able to make all the multiple appointments throughout, you know, 
the first two months and then throughout the next the next year. Um, and so they the they invited me to come in the next day um, for a physical exam and, and blood draw and um, everything checked out there. It was um, about a, a week after that that the uh, they confirmed that that I was in the study and invited me to come in on on Monday morning for the for so the first shot. It was this Monday, just five five days ago, that you yeah. got the first shot. So yeah. I'm curious, being in the room, seeing the vial or the needle coming at you, yeah. is anything going through your head at that point? Or are you just like, all right, I'm in it. I committed. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, uh, d the, definitely the second. Um, uh, calm. Um, you know, committed. I, I uh, you know, just went, I, I wasn't scared. Um, I, um, you know, I, I was just there and it was, I thought of it as getting a flu shot. It, it wasn't, um, you know, I don't know if we, if, if I, or we kind of turn off, um, some of those fears that we should have <laughs> being jabbed with a needle that, that contains <laughs> experimental <laughs> messenger RNA. Um, I can't, I, I can't quite access what, what that was, but it, it wasn't, uh, it, I, I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel, um, uh, worried, I, I, but I can't say that that's because like, I'm some super strong person or something. I think it was just a, a, a normal, um, uh, reaction to getting through something. Just so people have context, the vaccine that you got does not contain any portion of the live coronavirus, a dead version of the coronavirus, what it is, and I just want to read it so that I actually get it correct, is that they've created the, the experimental vaccine is actually a copy of the virus's genetic code with no element of the virus at all. That's correct, yes? That is correct, yeah. That's okay. my understanding, yeah. And did yeah. they give you any indication of potential side effects, even if it's just a copy of a virus's code, like what could possibly happen? Um, you know, it was the, well, I, I believe, I believe that this is the same process that they used for um, MERS and SARS vaccines. Um, and so they had some ideas from that. And so what, you know, what I read and what I remember them telling me was the usual uh, vaccine risks of, of, of soreness, you know, at site of injection, fatigue, muscle aches, nausea um so i i actually haven't i might my, my arm was sore for like the next day a little bit but it actually was less sore than i've had um in the past in in a flu shot so i've not i've not experienced any of any of those side effects and you're feeling fine yeah Be through through the vaccine i'm feeling great um yeah you know, with everything else that's going on, right? It's hard to separate, but I, but I, do. I, I was, I should have compartmentalized that from yeah. the vaccine. You're not having any kind of uh, consequences so far, which, no, no. you know, hopefully that will re remain for you. And yeah. and where do you go from here? What's the next stage of the trial? Because I know this was stage one. So what happens next? Yeah, so uh, stage stage one, the first first injection. Then I they, we do a couple um, follow up phone calls in the following days. Um, I will go back on Monday, a week after the injection, for um, blood draws, and um, I'll go back another week after that for another round of blood draws, um, and then four weeks from the original injection, we'll just do it one more time. We'll go for the second. I'll go for the second injection, and then uh, the same kind of types of follow ups for for uh, a couple weeks after that. Then um, over the next 14 months, I'll have a handful of, of additional visits uh, and blood draws, but not, not too much uh, beyond that, or not anything else beyond that. So there's still, we've still got time on the back end of this now that the, the, the staging has started with testing oh. the vaccine, there's, there's, a fair uh, amount of time to actually see this through before the scientists and researchers know yeah. if this is going to work. Yeah, yeah. Through through my study, it's another, I think it's 14 or 16 months. And, and, and in the broad spectrum of, of all of the research that's being done, they're anticipating about 18 months. This is just, just happens to be the first trial. There are many, many behind it. Um, 
Uh, but you know, they, you know, you start out small with just a handful of people, just to make sure that there aren't any major. Um, so you know, if things go well here, then they'll expand it out to a larger group of people, and it, it'll definitely take some time. And and you know, again, there are many other studies coming behind this using. I don't act, know it all, but I believe using different technology, different different mRNA. I don't know, um, but so you know, the chances of this, what I got, being the one. I don't know, but but it, it is a step forward to getting closer to figuring it out. I have to say that I am just awed by your bravery and your selflessness faced with everything else that we're all faced with because where the rest of us are dealing with all the complex layers of what coronavirus is bringing, you on top of it are now participating in this experimental trial that adds a whole other layer that none of us can understand. So how are you handling all of it? I, I really uh, am only beginning to understand that and, and, and what that means. So I would say, you know, the first, uh, the first three days, what we're on Thursday now, I got the shot on Monday. Um, I, I, I was really focused on, on, um, you know, media and and talking about you know being part of the study and um and that and it was you know finally last night um where i just cracked just a little bit and broke down you know and there's way more to come but just a little bit broke down uh and and started thinking about um you know all the all the other things going on in my life and all the other things that that i need to worry about um um you know, I, I, it dawned on me, this is Thursday, it's dawning on me this morning that my daughter has asthma. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a new thing for our family, but like, it, it, it's been four days of, of crisis and I, and I hadn't even thought about what this means to her until this morning. So that was really um, overwhelming, um, you know, as a mother to, to um, realize that 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 was not my f first concern, but um, but that's okay. That's just where I am right now, and and, and that's it's it's all going to be a huge process. I just um, this morning I reached out to um, a counselor that I trust. I reached out to a spiritual leader that I that I've trusted in the past, um, and realized that I that I do have an opportunity to um, uh, ask for some some extra some extra help right now some some extra counseling um, um some words uh from people that i trust and and i'm thankful that i that uh that i i guess that i have it sounds it seems like i have the attention to or that the attention is on me enough that i can probably break through to request those things of people is there anything else that you want to talk about specifically i want to talk about my privilege to be able to do this um, I'm healthy. I have friends and family nearby. My kids are older. I have a full-time salary job in the tech industry um, that gives me the flexibility I need to um, take time off, to work from home, to um, to do what I need. Uh, and um, that's a huge privilege. And, and a lot of people do not have the privilege that I have. Uh, and so, um, that allows me to to do something risky like this um I, and i'm happy to do it but i really want to think about those that that can't do something like this right now um either you know health um certainly thinking about people that are losing their jobs right now people that are um uh you know need to feed their families need need health care i really hope that this is a wake-up call for our country to um to start taking care of people in the way that we need to. We need, um, we need universal health care. We need paid family, um, family time. We need paid sick leave. There, there are so many things that, um, that I'm so hopeful that, you know, obviously it's going to get a lot worse. Um, but I am a positive person and I, and I do believe in the good and, uh, I, I am so hopeful that this will will be the wake up call that that we need to 
to make some, some big changes in our country um, across the world too. There's a lot of enormity in, in, you know, in when I think about our situation and how scary that is for me, but, I, you know, just to step out of that for a minute and to just imagine what life is like for others who, who don't have all these safety nets that, that we have, um, it's overwhelming and, and I, and I don't know what to do with that. Um, but, you know, in a time of crisis, it is, natural for us to go inward to protect ourselves to protect our family to um hunker down and do that and and uh me being involved in this in this vaccine trial uh uh allows me to at times to you know stand speak peek outside of, of my world and to um think about helping others uh and i and i and i hope that we can all take that uh you know, yes, take care of ourselves, focus on that, but, but step out when you can and, and think about, think about what this means for others and, and ways that we can help. The reason why I so desperately wanted to speak to you and I'm so grateful to Lorraine for putting you on our radar is because we are all living through something unthinkable. And if we don't have glimmers of light in the dark and we don't have pockets of hope and inspiration, it's going to be that much harder to get through. Yeah. You are that hope. You are that inspiration. And I know I would not be alone in saying that you're a hero. And I don't know if you accept that title or if it makes you feel uncomfortable or whatever, weird <laughs> but you are Thank you're you. a hero point blank and the level of sacrifice you are making on behalf of not only your fellow Americans but on half on behalf of the world to be part of a solution and I know that you talked about privilege before but I also want to comment on the fact that with that privilege comes responsibility and there are those who take on the responsibility and there are those who don't for a variety of different reasons. But I want to express my sincere gratitude to you. And I know I am not alone in that in thanking you so very much for stepping outside of yourself and outside of the protection of your family to do this for all of us. Thank you. That means a lot. And, and I'm, I'm, um, absorbing the, the enormity of, of, of all of this and thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to be able to do that.